Enterprise Computing Preliminary Course Unit 1, Interactive Media and the User Experience. So with this actual unit here, we're taking a look at interactive media. So the use of multimedia types within specific software and systems, okay, that allow for interactivity from the users. So those media types being things such as text, image, audio, video, animation, okay, and then behind them, the use of hyperlinks that so things can be clicked on within specific systems so the user can control their experience within that type of system. Now, ultimately what's happening with these systems is we're developing a targeted user experience, that of entertainment or education or some sort of experience we want the user to have in a positive way so that they keep coming back to this type of system and want to keep on using it. So that's what this actual unit's going to be about. The first subtopic within this unit is that of the ubiquity of interactive media. And what ubiquity means is that this interactive media is everywhere. It's being used in many different types of industries in many different ways, okay? It's already out there. And pretty much the success of enterprises is knowing this and using interactive media themselves so that they can engage with users and develop positive user experiences for their own customers. So that's what we're trying to understand here with this subtopic. Now, this is the largest subtopic of this unit of the prelim course. And basically it takes up three quarters of the knowledge and content. So a lot of the terms we're gonna go through here makes up most of this unit. So let's start off with first with just understanding what is interactive media and user experience. As I mentioned, it's the use of the different media types in order to create an experience for users that is targeted and hopefully positive to keep them coming back. Now, when developing these systems, we need to factor in the issues associated with these systems. And we've got three categories of issues. Legal issues that relate to laws in place that are obviously mandatory and enforceable that must be abided by by the systems we develop social issues related to the interactivity options between users, which can be both positive and negative, okay? But how we are developing virtual communities and obviously what happens within those virtual communities based on the experience by our system. And then finally, the ethical implications of the systems created, okay? reflected upon the morals and values of the community we're creating for. And we want to abide by that if we want people to use our actual system. So we need to know what they think is right and wrong and make sure that our system aligns with that if we want them to use it. The next area of this is the evolution of um, interactive media. And we look at some of the technology that has developed over the last few years that is kind of now the foundation of what we have in interactive media systems. So that of blogs where people can make posts uh, of specific media types, all right? And then other users can comment on those posts and their comments are listed beneath the original post. This means other users of the platform can then come along and not only see the post, but also see other users' comments and then comment themselves, creating a great sense of community. Now, these used to be dedicated sites, but now obviously this blog type of technology is embedded into social media and is a foundation of it, okay? So that all users can interact with each other and talk about what's being posted. The next area is that of online video uh, through streaming services. Now video can be distributed through the internet and not necessarily need to be downloaded. And that used to take forever in the past because video was of such large file sizes. But now with compression techniques such as MP4 and the fact that the streaming service can buffer the actual data live to the user system without them really having to wait any time to view the video, okay, has made it a lot more efficient and supports the user experience when they want to watch a movie because they get it quick, they get it at high resolution and high quality at a very low compressed rate. And then stemming from that too with audio, how digital radio has changed from the traditional sense of a single channel being broadcast from a broadcast station, now through a higher frequency, Radio stations can broadcast multiple channels from their station in a digital rate, meaning that users don't just have to watch it on or listen to it on their radio. And this is the same with streaming services with TVs. They can actually listen or watch those uh, elements on multiple devices, their computers, their tablets, their mobile phones, their gaming consoles, because it's talking a digital language it can be understood by digital devices. Okay, so those evolutions have allowed for the expansion of interactive media systems. 
Now, stemming from this is who owns the data, okay? And that's what IP relates to, intellectual property, which is around for all types of creativity, all right? Those people who create something are automatically awarded intellectual property, unless they are working for a specific business that is paying them to develop something, where then we get a bit of a gray area and certain terms and conditions need to be met to say who is the creator, who is the owner, and all of that. Then another branch from this is known as ICIP, which is Indigenous Culture Intellectual Property, which is the, for the protection of the actual Indigenous people's uh, traditions and their cultures and the things that directly relate to them in order to support those traditions. So this might be things such as artwork, ceremonies and uh, songs okay that have been developed over the centuries you know and been kept alive okay for these indigenous cultures and in australia we have our own of the aboriginal and torres strait islanders so it makes sure that they celebrate those traditions and that it is known that it is their traditions so it prevents others from exploiting their traditions and ensures that any profits that come from their traditions go back into these communities supporting our indigenous nations the next area we'll look at then is interactive media's contribution to enterprises. And these are obviously ones that you might have already seen yourself. So firstly, in online training where the different media types can create engaging experiences, allowing people to learn. Okay, there's obviously a lot of apps out there where you can learn straight from the app if you want to learn a specific language where you can speak into your actual mobile phone and the app will then tell you the translation of that word you just said into another language, as well as uh, literacy and numeracy activities for children, okay, which are heavy on animation and video and audio, allowing them to learn basic concepts without the need to read. It's instead taught through audio and through animation so they can learn how to read, okay, being supported by the other media types. We then have entertainment and entertainment, obviously we think of movies and gaming and now that's been enhanced through things such as virtual reality, okay, allowing users to be engaged within environments where they control what happens, okay, as well as what's being done with movies and the level of animation, how we can create whole new worlds, okay, for users through entertainment, you know, providing that experience of escapism where they feel like they're in another place altogether when inter interacting with entertainment types of software. And then finally, specialist apps. Apps that allow us to do things that we could never do before, okay, or make those things we could do before a lot more efficient, such as delivery tracking when we order items online. Okay, there are specialist apps such as Uber and Uber Eats, okay, that allow us to order services, whether it be to a car to pick us up and take us to a destination, or get food delivered to our house. It helps us connect with someone who can do that, connect with a specific store, and allow for that person to go to the store and bring us our food without us ever having to move off our seat. So it improves our quality of life there. Okay, And obviously there's a variety of specialist apps that even help us within our own industries in doing our work through providing measurements and use augmented reality to put overlays on things we point our cameras and tablets at, Okay, enhancing how we do our work. So we're very lucky to live in nature. We have that technology to support us. The next area is that of hardware performance requirements. The fact that we need to have a certain degree of hardware running on systems in order to support the software, okay? Because interactive media does make use of those media types, specifically video and animation that can be quite taxing on a system in relation to hardware requirements. And once it does have that impact, can lead to lag or can lead to crashing if the hardware requirements aren't met. So we need something as a high powered CPU for the processing of this data, for the rendering of graphics, and obviously the frames per second for the video, which will be supported by a graphics processing unit, a GPU, which can be expanded upon with cards. And then obviously RAM as well for putting all this live data on screen for the user to interact with. These files can be quite large as well for interactive media. So we need to have a hard drive or solid state drive behind the scenes to store the data on if it is on a local system. But then quite often these days too, they are internet based systems which connect to the cloud. So that means we need to have appropriate communications technology in order to connect to the cloud and stream the video data to our system or allow us to access files for us to do collaborative work. So the hardware needs to be in place for the success of these systems. The next area is of supporting the creative process. So platforms allow users to create 
within their environments, such as Minecraft, such as Roblox for sandbox gaming, where you're not just creating things, but then you can share your creations with other users. Okay, and then they can build upon or interact with them too. Once again, creating that community aspect. Social media too has this same type of notion too, where users can create graphics and videos or share their ideas through posts and share them within their networks. And people can comment on those through that blog like technology. And then also reshare through their own networks, allowing businesses and specific users brands to be ex uh, expanded upon throughout the world through people sharing their data, okay, through social media platforms. Okay, and then while all this data is out there being shared, it's important to note digital creating comments, the ownership of that data and what other users can do with that data through specific creative comments. Okay, whether people can only share that data and keep it in the way that it is, or they're allowed to re-edit it, but if they re-edit it, they've got to acknowledge the source, or if they're just resharing it, they've got to acknowledge the source. So there are specific digital creative comments that outline what users can do with specific data that's shared over the internet. And obviously it's very easy to copy and paste data. So we have to be mindful of this to ensure that we're not breaching creative commons as well as certain types of IP which we mentioned earlier. The next area then is the influence uh, interactive media can have on human behavior. And obviously there's positive and negative. Okay, there is positive elements which relate to creativity and the sharing of ideas. But then there's also negative elements related to addiction and people finding it hard to pull themselves away from the screen. Stemming from this, we specifically have an influence that is targeted on consumers, okay, which is what businesses want to do guiding their choice through the use of algorithms in their specific platforms that kind of map out what do users like looking at on our platform and then showing other things within the platform that they might want to watch just as how youtube shows you videos you might be interested in based on what you've been watching okay your browser will store cookies about specific websites to make it easier for you to interact with the website and obviously enhance your experience through increasing the speed at which uh, files load on the website because you've already seen them before from the previous time you visited, as well as have autofill options for your actual name, password information, as well as financial data too. So hopefully if you're on eBay, it makes the experience a lot easier for you to purchase an item because it remembers all your card details details or your PayPal details, making it quicker for you to purchase and making it easier for you to purchase, which is another one. So they can hopefully get you to purchase quicker as opposed to you second guessing yourself and then maybe talking yourself out of purchasing an item. And then also the most traditional type of way uh, consumers behavior can be influenced online through the use of pop-ups and uh, targeted advertising on social media platforms. Okay, which is specific for you, okay, and differs to other users. So you'll just see certain ads pop up based on what you're looking at and hopefully wanting you to click through those ads so you can visit the advertiser's website and hopefully purchase something there too. All right. Now, from here then, we look at how interactive media encourages human connections. Now, there's that of crowdsourcing when someone wants to start a business or build a specific type of interactive media product there are avenues out there like kickstarter that allows them to fundraise and allows people to donate money and by them specifying what is their cause what do they want to create and by putting it out there people can see oh is this something that i think would be very valuable they then can donate to this actual platform and Based on how much they donate, they can also be given a reward, the actual user that does donate. And it could be that they actually get the actual software once it's been created or a variety of other extensions and media or consumables that will be given to them based on the size of their donation. And that'll be listed on the crowdsourcing website. And then hopefully the people can raise the amount of money they want and they might even have extensions saying if they raise more than the money they need, they'll build even more things with the actual money that they're going to get. So it encourages that level of creativity and community to create new ideas and new systems, encouraging people to be creators. Also, what we have are these massive open online courses for people to learn things. Okay, everyone thinks they're an expert these days and there's lots of online courses out there. Obviously, I'm biased to the teachers being the experts and encourage them to make their own online courses out there, as well as professionals within specific industries, okay, who know things. They can create courses out there for many users all over the world to access. And I guess the side of it is, 
the people who sign up need to ensure that they are getting a professional or an educator okay behind the scenes okay so they will ensure that the course they're getting is made by an expert and someone who will be able to teach them in whatever they are wishing to learn and then the other area with human connections is of massive multiplayer online games okay many games are online these days and obviously we can have many users okay there are games like overwatch and even minecraft which i've talked about before allow for multiple players to play together and them to build things together interact with each other okay many users from all over the place okay creating those great virtual online communities Okay, and then the final area of the ubiquity of interactive media is that of the creation of digital identities. The fact that when we are gaming or when we are on social media, we have an e-profile and we create that ourselves. We can pretty much write anything we want for that or put whatever pictures we want for that. And that is our avatar for who we are online. And that leads us into the second point of the identifier versus the identity what we put out there about ourselves versus who we actually are and there can be a disparity there purposefully done for privacy's sake okay to for who we are online or to spread a message of positivity out there too and whatever we're trying to get across okay people might try to use these things for profiling who we are because we can search users accounts okay and that might be done by businesses as when you're applying for a job look at who you are online but then in order to protect users too they can establish privacy settings that which gives only specific users that the person ticks off allow them to see their accounts and see what information they have with their accounts okay and then depending on the platform too, that could be open or could be quite restrictive depending on the social media platforms we are using. But essentially, digital identities, they may vary between our different social media and gaming accounts very uh, differently depending on our purpose for why we are using them there. But obviously understanding why we do that and the settings that are in place in order to protect us as users. So that's it for the first topic of this unit. The next two topics are quite smaller in comparison, but involve a bit more creativity and the development components of the unit. So the first one is that of capturing, storing and integrating data for interactive media systems. So firstly, of selecting uh, file formats and as already mentioned for video, things such as MP4, there's also MP3 for audio and then obviously things for text and audio and images as well that have appropriate compression techniques for keeping file sizes low, but also still retaining a high quality of media, but then also compatibility with systems, okay, that the software we're going to be using in conjunction with our media types is compatible in bringing all our data types together and then can be used by our users when they access our interactive media system. The next category is the use of software. Okay, what software will we be using as a part of it? Will our actual site be web-based and be run through an internet browser when our user visits our site? Or will we be developing an app from the ground up that needs to be downloaded so it can be viewed on a mobile device in order to increase user experience? So that needs to be factored in. With user software, we then got to think of hardware too. We spoke about hardware before in the CPU, RAM, uh, storage devices, and then communications technology for interacting with cloud-based systems. But then we've also got to look at hardware's place in compressing data, okay? Because like we said, a lot of these file types we use, we want to use this for compression, so it speeds up the process of displaying the media types and improves that user experience. So that are lossy compression, where we can't revert data back to its uncompressed state, and then lossless compression types, where we can revert data back to its uncompressed state, where it's at full quality once again so their factors on the actual way that we store data their file sizes and user experience we then have how UI impacts on user experience so UI means okay the user interface so what you see on screen now it also depends on the device you're using too because the user interface for a desktop computer involves the use of a mouse and keyboard where you're clicking on things but then the user interface on a tablet and touchscreen technology has bigger icons because people are usually interacting through pressing with their fingers which are a lot chunkier than a cursor okay and they need to be able to interact in that way and then there's other other systems too that involve user movement with that accelerometers and obviously um, headsets for virtual reality that need to read data based on users movement information too so the user interface provided it's kind of that front line for user experience and how well the user can interact with that user interface will ultimately affect their experience and basically what data comes back to them and through the interface will obviously relate to their enjoyment 
we then have the final area here of developing and engaging UX. So that obviously factors in UI, and this is something we need to actually do as a part of this unit, and that's why it's in yellow. We need to create an actual interface that is a positive user experience for whatever our assessment is telling us to do, factoring in these design elements. Now, this then stems over to the final subtopic, that of creating an interactive media system. So the first bit doing is applying design thinking, okay, going through a design process in our head, understanding the problem, planning our solutions, building that solution, and then evaluating that solution, okay, and in the context of this user unit as per the syllabus, we want to develop a front-end web-based system, and by front-end meaning what the user sees, so not the behind-the-scenes stuff, okay, of the data where it's stored and all that, the front end where they might be entering their data and what happens on screen, pretty much everything on the user's end there. Because it is front end, we want to see those UX and UI principles, okay, that of layouts, color schemes, a balance within screen, all of that within the actual work that a student puts forward in order to get marks, okay? A positive user experience need to be developed by students, okay, in order to be successful in this unit. The next category is developing an interactive work of journalism. So specifically, you're creating some sort of article that is making use of media types, okay, telling a story, potentially through this front-end web-based system. That's what it's kind of looking like as the syllabus writes it here, okay, you're making an online work of journalism. The next area is applying user interaction and UX. How does the user interact with this actual website? Okay, and that should be uh, seen through your development. Okay, and we have communication processes. You might embed social media functions within your site or have some sort of blocking system for the user to interact with your website. The ability to search, sort, and make selections within the website will also increase their interactivity. Or you might actually embed a game into your website that allows the users to interact. Okay, how you do that? There's many different ways, and we'll see what kind of comes forward with what available platforms are out there for embedding into our websites. And then the final area of this actual unit is that of the different project management approaches. So I already kind of alluded to the, the traditional technique of going through the actual steps one by one, but then there are obviously other areas such as outsourcing areas to specialists so they can create portions of your design for you, prototyping where we're developing a working model and obtaining feedback and then modifying our systems based on feedback, customization where we already have templates of things available and then we modify them to meet our audience as well as agile methods where we don't really have a structure we more focus on teamwork and getting an output out there quickly okay and then developing that output and expanding on that output okay once an initial version is out there and continually building upon it with updates so i hope this video has given you an understanding of this first unit of the enterprise computing syllabus okay it is quite broad and obviously making use of a lot of new technology but a lot of modern technology as well okay but understanding that how interactive media it's everywhere and if we're going to be successful with our enterprise systems we need to adopt these principles related to interactive media that of ux and ui ensuring that we are creating systems that meet our specific targeted audiences